All right, mates. See, good to see you all here. Thanks very much for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a different render for another stage of the game I'm working on. So I'm just going to crack on with this. Um, those of you who watched one of my previous videos will recognize this scene um, if we were to come out of this camera and just go into perspective view. We've kind of got to swing around because the scene's in a weird position, um, which is actually really annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything here inside a group. Just going to hit accept, bish bash bosh. And now I'm going to spin it round. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come out of uh, NVIDIA IRO mode. Going to go back into texture shaded mode. You can see the, the cube that I used as a closet. So I'm going to uh, just use my move tool. I'm going to spin this all round 180 degrees. And then I'm going to drag it along this way. And then if I go to reset my view I can actually drag the scene if I go let's see is that hmm interesting let's just try playing with this a smidge so that the default camera view is not far off so we need to move back on the z-axis a little bit and left on the x-axis a bit there we go 221 that doesn't feel right okay let's go back to 118 now and then just move this do you know what that's good enough that's fine it's just for convenience sake really so now i can keep that group or i can just drag all of this stuff back out of the group which is what i'm going to do there we go, and now I can delete the group. And everything's where it should be, but now slightly better oriented, so I'm gonna save that. So now when I load the scene, the camera's gonna be actually close to the door rather than flipping miles away, which is just, it's just inconvenient and annoying. As you can see, the scene camera's up there. All right, so in the previous scene, we created this closet that we were looking out of, and I'm going to actually select those items there like that and I'm going to put those into a group and I'm just going to call this uh, closet closet there we go and now I can hide that when I'm not using it but yeah I can deselect it as well perfect and I should probably just put the closet camera in there as well nice so in this scene, um, what is, what's happening in the story at this point is that the character is basically just wasting time until a certain other event occurs, and he's walking around the house and uh, sees, you know, his mum's lounging by the pool at one point, and then he, he does something else, and time moves on. And in this episode, this sort of scene, this is where the mum character is getting ready for a night out. So I'm just going to pick a good outfit for her to wear. I'm going to change her outfit off cam for obvious reasons i'll see you again in a few seconds okie doke so i've got her into a smart looking dress it's um fairly low cut but uh, she's going for a special night out so you know it doesn't seem like it's too out so now i've just got to find a pose that's sort of like a getting ready in the mirror kind of pose i'm thinking um yeah there's a lot of options a whole lot of options let's just try like random poses and see what we come up with yeah yeah that could work um so we're sort of again suspension of disbelief kind of issue here what is is going on is that the, the main character is stood by the door sees her and she obviously appears to be getting ready now we know that there's not a mirror in this corner of the room but for the sake of this um, what we're gonna we're just gonna go with you know kind of like she is getting ready and looking in the mirror so we need to obviously lift her up and put her in some shoes that also suit the occasion so I'm just gonna well, quickly go into the wardrobe and we're gonna just look for footwear and we're just gonna give her some pumps that um, look like 
she's going out. She's got to find some nice smart shoes. And um, just, <laughs> the problem with having a huge content library at this point is that they are there's many options. So it's just finding one that suits the character and the occasion. So I'm thinking probably I'm seeing if I've got any kind of stiletto-y style type stiletto -y style shoes which would suit the mood. In fact, they kind of look okay. They're massively not really what... That's good. Let's go with that. Okay, turns out we're missing things from our content library, so it doesn't matter. We will remove those. Let's see if we've got anything that actually does have the necessary files attached. That could work. Yeah, that'll do. Right, so now we've got to quickly make sure that our feet aren't poking through the floor, which is another irritation, so we'll just bring her up until those shoes are... There we go, that looks better. Of course, so she's checking out in the mirror. Now she is going, this is kind of a big deal, the, 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 uh, the evening that she's going for, it's not a date, but it is an occasion, so I feel like maybe she would put in some effort on doing her hair, not that she doesn't have nice hair in the first place, but, um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> so I'm going to find a hairstyle that looks a bit smarter, and just make sure I've got something that matches the colours as well, which is really important, obviously, because people's hair doesn't just change willy-nilly even in pretend land so we're looking for something that's smart but is similar in length so something that shoulder length hair could be styled into there's there have been a lot of releases recently on the um on the marketplace that could work so um, i have got a few hairstyles to choose from i just really want to it's got to be realistic though. Someone, someone's head doesn't just grow, even with temporary extensions. If, if they put temporary extensions in, they're not going to be tying it back because um, that would rip the temporary extensions out. So we need something that's smart, but um, not so dissimilar in length from her existing style that it would look ridiculous. So shoulder length hair that's a bit smarter. That could work. Let's see how that looks. Just got to change the color once it loads because I believe the default air style is something in blonde, which we don't want. We want something in dark brown. Okie doke, so that is a hairstyle. I'm pretty happy with that one. I think that's going to be the one I'm going to go with for this scene. So now what I want to do is just quickly run an eye ray test just to see how she's going to look from this kind of angle and then I'll know if I need to add any more kind of imaginary lights to the scene or not because I really want these kind of these images to really pop there it's kind of almost like beauty photography but in situ so for some reason the render settings are all screwy so let's just change that quickly give us a bit of a fighting chance of having any luck. The weird thing is that the HDRI is actually appearing in the reflection in the glass, which is very odd, but that's to be expected. So there we go. Now we can see outside the window, it's very light, but inside the room is also very well lit. So it does create um, an opportunity, shall we say. So I'm going to just pop my camera kind of down here. This will work camera apply the selective viewport except there and then we can go into our camera camera three and we can zoom ourselves in and use our move tool to just do that facial expression is looking a bit odd so we're going to fix that it's going to be our next thing although the vacant expression does kind of work because she is kind of gazing into a window, into a mirror, sorry. So we'll see how it looks without first. So I'm gonna go back into texture shaded mode. We've got our camera into roughly into position. So now what I want to do is add some light around her head and shoulders and highlight around the back of her. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a sphere. 
give Das Studio a moment to catch up. Seems to be having a bit of a hissy fit. There we go. So we're going to create a sphere. I think it's going to be about two meter. No, let's go 1.5 meters. Less segments, the better, really. Happy days, right? So where is our sphere? Let's just zoom in on that. Cool. Bring our move tool in. Stick that more or less over where we want it to be so that we don't have to faff around too much. So it's going to be above her head. In fact, it might be worth just plopping this so that her head is dead central. Now we're going to go into wire shaded mode, wire texture shaded mode. And I'm going to select my uh, geometry selection tool, like so. Give Das Studio a moment or two to catch up again. There you go. Cool beans. Right, so now I'm just going to delete a load of faces from Geometry Editing, Delete Selected Polygons, uh, yes, thank you. And I'm just going to keep deleting them until I've got more or less the shape that I'm after. Doesn't matter, you haven't got to do them all in one go. As you can see, you can just kind of chip away at it until you get the shape that you're after. I'm just going to center the camera on that again. And come in, there we go. So we don't need any of these ones either. Delete selected polygons. Yes, thank you. A bloody building. What idiot put a building there? Oh, that would be me then. Delete selected polygons. Yes. Don't need any of these ones in the bottom section. Don't need any of these ones either, or those ones. I better just hold down shift and get that one as well. Delete selected polygons again. Okay, how are we doing? Don't really want that one or that one either. Delete selected polygons. Right, where are we at? Got kind of what we're after. I don't really care too much about these ones at the top of the shape at all, to be honest. So I'm just going to get rid of those. And delete selected polygons. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to the camera view, camera three. And we're just going to check that we can't actually see that shape. I'm going to bring it down as close as I can get away with to the edge of the frame without actually being in frame. You can go back into texture shaded mode now. And with that shape selected, I'm going to go into my surfaces tab. Gonna whip up a quick ghost light in fact you know what i'm going to use the ghost light material that i used in, that i created in my previous video cool beans now i can drop that down a smidge more that it's kind of there and let's just see how that looks hopefully i've got a feeling it's going to be mega bright and illuminate the entire room so i am going to have to make some slight adjustments i suspect I'm anticipating that this is going to be massively blown out. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's still a bit bright though. So we go into our surfaces tab under luminous. I'm just going to drop that down to about 500 and see what happens. And I'm going to drop that down to right the 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 bones, the center bone, is still showing the height of the bottom of the sphere. So we kind of have to ignore that. Whereas the guide that you can see there is actually showing us the edge of the remaining shape. So I'm going to actually move that. Okay, zoom in a bit using our move tool. Give it a moment and then I'm just going to drag it across so that it kind of wraps around her a little bit closer. And then get, just whip back to camera three. It's, it all seems to be at the back at the moment. And what we can do is we can actually rotate it until we get a little bit more light around the front. There you go. Starting to show light around the front now as well. So let's rotate that a little bit more. I think it's kind of there. That looks better. Although it still kind of looks. Let's just go a little bit further. See what happens. Probably a bit too much around the front. 
but I need to increase the intensity of the surface now anyway so let's just see what happens if I whip this up turn off two-sided light and you'll see that it doesn't illuminate her anymore so what I can do to fix that is I can go to geometry bring up the cutout opacity and then I can go back into my geometry editing tool like so select all of the sides that remain on the shape right click and then I'm going to go to geometry editing and flip normal of selected polygons and now you'll see that the light is actually on the inside rather than on the outside of the shape so now I can go back to 0 0.00001 well it's still a little bit and then we can unselect that there we go now it's lighting inwards rather than outwards which is kind of what we wanted it to do so now i can go to edit the emission property of that i'm going to bring that back up to maybe like 900 and see what happens that's cool if i think that maybe the light is too soft perhaps i can go to parameters and i can drop the scale down maybe bring it in a little bit I think it's too far forwards now so let's bring up our move tool okay, I have to go back into perspective view again okay, come on and just move it away from her a little bit again and just see we can see the kind of highlights that it's creating Maybe just bring that rotation back a smidge. Right, I'm digging that. Let's check that out. Yeah, it's looking good. Right, so now we're in our camera. I'm going to select camera three again. I think I might need to zoom in a little bit more. And obviously, that means rotating the camera up a touch again. Like that. Now I've got to add some depth of field. Go back to perspective view swing the camera around so that we can see where the focus point is the focal point sorry as we use the correct terminology and it's pretty much where i want it to be there um i maybe narrow that even more so that it really is like properly focused laser focused on our eyeball in order to do that i have to come around the other side check that it is actually focused on her near eye which it's damn close if it isn't I would say just bring that in a touch there we go right now if we go back to our camera view mode again and then we can adjust it it's, it's basically laser focused on exactly the point I need it to be I know people are going to have a proper OCD fit if I don't turn off the selectability so this kind of shallow depth of field generally speaking you wouldn't use for a half body shot like this you would normally keep this shallower depth of field for a real close-up of the face so what I think I will do is for this first shot I might really just zoom in and get a really sharp shot of her face and um, so I am gonna have to increase the f-stop again to probably about f16 and then zoom in with the camera otherwise the uh, basically the more you zoom in the tighter that becomes so you know we're gonna zoom right in and we'll just bring her face into focus like that as you can see that's become really tight already so now i need to go back into my perspective view and you can see how shallow how narrow that focal range has become so that's something to be mindful of when you're setting up these kind of shots and then if we come back to our camera view mode you can see now that it's focused on her near eyeball and that the depth of field is really nice really nice and sharp on her face and then just slightly softening out on her shoulders and then the background is really really nicely blurred so i'm pretty happy with this as a starting shot for this scene so i'm just going to hit the render button and you'll see the end results in a moment thanks very much for watching this video guys it means a lot to me i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye